I'm Bridget Bennett. I'm Professor of American Literature and Culture in the School of English at the University of Leeds, and I'm going to be talking about the art of comparison. Comparison is a technique or method we're all familiar with. It's a way of describing one thing in terms of one or more other things. If I was asked to describe something to you now, I'd probably start by listing a set of positive attributes, characteristics or properties which it had and which help define it. In this way, I could give a sense of what it was like using recognisable characteristics. I might go on to cite some negative attributes, characteristics or properties which it did not have. Finally, I might compare it with something else. That table has four legs. It is rectangular. It has a flat surface. These are all positive claims. It does not have three legs. It is not circular. It does not have a sloping surface. These are negative claims. It does not look like that chest of drawers because it has no drawers, but it does resemble that desk because they're both made of oak. I think we could easily come up with a list of comparisons which use this basic technique. But there are other ways of comparing things too. And we all compare things all the time and use comparison routinely. But how many of us reflect on how we construct our comparisons and what they're reliant on? Since we've all regularly been comparing things all our lives and putting these comparisons into language from an early age, the processes by and through which we do this seem to be naturalised. But we should remember that comparison is a learned thing as well as a complex one. What are we doing when we make comparisons then? And how can comparison be a tool to help elucidate literary texts? It would make no sense to someone who didn't share my understanding of shapes to call a table rectangular or circular. In using these shape names, I assume that most of us can imagine a rectangle or a circle. Someone who could not count might be baffled by me citing the number of legs on a table. Comparison usually relies on some basic assumptions of shared familiarity then. If I compare two things, I'll use examples that will work according to the context and listeners or readers. This is something which we all do all the time. 